What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Halloween Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And I know I haven't been doing a lot of videos lately. Uh, I'll be stepping up on that, you know, coming this week. But I got some news today, uh, like a lot of you, that something happened in Donovan. And, and so I wanted to speak on it uh, for a few different reasons, right? Uh, Maurice Vasquez, a.k.a. Snoop, the Playboy president, the, you know, S predator, the you name it, um, has caught a body, right? Has caught a body. Uh, in Donovan, so it seems, right? At least that's what CDC is saying. And the details of what happened, like, you know, you can watch Jay Han's video. Um, I don't know these different actors involved. I, I do know Snoop. Um, when I first heard about it, you know, and, and hearing the description of, of his co-defendant in this case, I wanted to wait to see the press release, you know, because initially I thought, man, it sounds like this other fool blasted the victim and maybe snoop was just there as a participant uh because historically uh snoop doesn't pick up knives right um he it, that's kind of been the the narrative about him uh from what i've heard for a long time you know and so uh, i was a little bit surprised that he was involved in a case like this and then i thought oh maybe you know he was just there but then cdc came out with the press release and and we never know exactly how factual those are, right? That's that's CDC's version. But in their version, they say that that they saw both the individuals, right? Snoop and, and the other cat, um, you know, blasting this dude, right? So so maybe it's true, right? Maybe, maybe he did pick up pick up a weapon. Uh regardless, I don't think he ever stood a chance of coming home before. Uh, whatever chance he may have had is is out the window now. And and I think society is better better for it, right? So I'm, you know, I'm not going to set a tear for the dude. Um, but but there's also talk of, you know, he was a level four, and and then he was overrided to go be put in Donovan on a level three yard. And I've heard it mentioned that you know there's going to be lawsuits, this and that. I highly doubt it. Uh, I mean, somebody might sue, right? Anybody can sue anybody for anything, but I doubt the lawsuit will go anywhere. Uh, it is not that unusual for individuals to be overrided uh, one way or the other and, and hurt. Um, when I was in Salinas Valley, right on the 270 side, there was a gym. Uh, I don't think that's as common anymore because you know the prisons aren't as overcrowded, but, uh, but it was real common back then to have a gym on a level four yard in which there was level ones and level twos, right? And to have a gym on a level three yard in which you had you know level ones and level twos. And so it's not, uh, that's not unusual. And CDC has the flexibility and the freedom as far as the court's concerned to house anybody anywhere that they want to. Um, they they have an obligation to try to keep you safe in the sense of if if you have an enemy list or, you know, they put you somewhere where it's documented that you could be in harm's way or, or you know, because of your charges or whatever. That's a little bit of a different story. Um, they still get away with a lot, but at least there's, you know, there's a little bit of meat on that bone. If if you wanted to, you know, to argue that CDC made you unsafe, but just strictly based on classification stuff, that's CDC's own internal system. You don't have some legal right to be housed in a facility consistent with your classification score, right? Um, when those level twos would sometimes get blasted on level four yards, a Oh, well, you know what I mean? That's, prison is a dangerous place and sometimes dangerous things happen. Uh, for myself, I've talked about it before. Uh, when I was in Salinas Valley, I made a real effort to uh, to use those that were level ones and level twos in the gym as either the bombers in, in removals of, of level four guys or to do hands-on removals of other individuals that were level ones or twos in the gym that had to go, right? Because at least back then, if you were to bomber in a situation, but they didn't find the piece or, or the weapon, then you weren't going to get a DA referral, right? And and my thought was these, you know, these dudes from these lower classification levels, for one, a lot of times they just didn't have the, the discipline and the experience to conduct themselves properly in a level four environment, right? Um, it, it's more of a high stakes game and you got folks in there for like too many DUIs, you know? so. They don't necessarily have the discipline and they could wind up getting everybody in the yard on a wreck 
but also my thought was, hey, you know, you go bust this move. There's no weapon in your hand. Uh, you know, maybe once you go to the hole, even if your points go up a little bit, maybe you'll get sent to a more traditional level two yard somewhere where you could do your time more comfortably, you know. Uh, and, and so that was my thought. Right. But not everybody, not everybody took that approach. Uh, but but nonetheless, I, I don't think there's going to be a lawsuit. Right. Uh, or I don't think there will be a successful lawsuit. Now, as for why he went there from from the RHU, right, the restrictive housing unit in, in New Folsom, where he was at before. I, mean, I don't know uh, for sure. Uh, the RHU is not technically supposed to be like a permanent housing for people. CDC is leaving some people in those sections for long periods of time, for years. Uh, but but it wouldn't surprise me uh, if, if he wrote, you know, 602s and appealed and was like, hey, fool, why am I still housed here? I want to go somewhere where I could enjoy, you know, enjoy the the fruits of the mainline, right? Which which you really can't in the RHU. And and so maybe he did that and and they looked at it and they said, okay, fine. But because he's been involved in so many conflicts and because he's talked so crazy, um, there's probably a lot of, you know, he, a lot of people that have him on their enemy list. You know, obviously they're not going to put him on an active yard, right? For for his own safety. Um so now you got to look at all these 50-50 yards and, and SNY yards and uh, find a place where he fits. And they may not have been able to find a level four where there's not already enemy concerns. So they're like, so we'll just suits over here to the level three. Um, there's not a huge difference, right? Um, the 180 design on a level four versus a level three. Yeah, and it, there's a pretty big difference there in terms of how you're living. Um, but but it is what it is, right? And, and again, prison is a dangerous place. You never know what could happen. Um, you never know what position you could be put in to, to have to defend yourself or what position, you know, somebody else might put you in. Um, so it, it's unfortunate, you know, uh, I'd say my condolences to the victim in the same way that, that you know, it sucks to hear anybody lose their life uh, in prison uh, unless, you know, they got weirdo charges, right? Then, and it is what it is, you know, do the world a favor. Um, so, so yeah, Morris Vasquez, uh, you know, folks know that, that, that we got a history. Um, I, I don't think highly of him and, and he doesn't he think highly of me and, and that's fine. Um, I'm kind of frustrated that, that I never got my get backs for what he did to my sister, but, um, you know, it is what it is. He chose to go his own route and, and, and not be on the GP side anymore. So, so kind of lost my chance. Right. Um, but yeah, there it is. He uh he supposedly caught a body. I don't think uh that he's probably too bothered by this. Again, I, I don't think he had very much of a chance of ever coming home anyways. And so something like this is gonna wind up being a feather in his cap, right? It is it, gonna wind up being something that he can look and point to uh see, look, I'm still that guy, right? That that he has always imagined himself to be. Um, and it will probably work for for his little cult following, right? That that kind of hang on every word that that he says and and admire everything that that he does. Um, so probably play out well for him in, in the grand scheme of things, right? And and you can participate in incredible violence in CDC now, and it's not like you go get slammed down forever. You know things have changed. Uh, it's very difficult to even go to adset, right? To even get put in the hole for anything more than like ten days. Now I'm sure he'll be, you know, putting a hold from 110 days on a hot one, but uh, you know, he'll be back out on on a main line somewhere, uh, probably pretty soon, you know, or maybe at least back in, in the RHU. Uh, I have another video, uh, it's already recorded, but I'm gonna drop it tomorrow. I normally don't do content on weekends, but uh kind of talking about some of this integration stuff and, and everything else. So I think that might spur a little bit of conversation around how CDC is dealing with people of these different classification levels and, and backgrounds uh, and what things look like on paper versus what they look like in practice, uh, in particular for these dudes that, that are in the general population yards, right? So anyways, hey, it's, you know, there's going to be a ton of videos about this dude. Um, and I've seen a couple so far. I'm sure that there's going to be more, but uh, I wanted to, to throw my little two cents out there, right? That, that yeah, the, you know, 
the clown caught another case, man. And, and it is what it is. So help others move in excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. Help your community because they need you. And stay out of prison, man. Stay out of prison. It's, it's a dangerous place, uh, no matter what side of the fence you are. So take care.